This is Cronkite News. Everybody, everybody signs a waiver um, when they're signing up for the event, and um, everybody's um, welcome to wear a mask. Coming up, masks not mandatory, but will the president wear one at tonight's Phoenix rally? Plus, with Arizona becoming a hotspot for the coronavirus, is a vaccine in sight? I'll come home for practice and just start asking questions like, hey, what if this situation happens and what do I do here? And like father, like son, we'll introduce you to a high school athlete following in his father's footsteps. Cronkite News starts now. Welcome to this Cronkite News Update. I'm Sam Brennan. President Donald Trump's latest campaign stop is taking him to Arizona today, one of the nation's biggest hotspots for the coronavirus outbreak. This is video of the president leaving the White House this morning. He'll speak at a Students for Trump event this evening. But before that, Trump made a stop in Yuma to look at the border wall he's championed. Madison Atkinson is giving us some insight into Trump's visit at the border. Trump visited Yuma to commemorate the building of the 200-mile border wall. It's the most powerful and comprehensive border wall structure anywhere in the world. It's got technology that nobody would even believe between uh, sensors and cameras and everything else. Custom and Border Protection Commissioner Mark Moran also talked about the technology as well, saying all 220 new miles of wall system have integrated technology, lighting, and access roads. Paris Denard with Black Voices for Trump 2020 grew up here in Arizona and spoke with me about the impact of the border wall, not just on security, but on our economy. Building the wall, building a strong wall, and. Uh, preventing open borders from being the law of the land is something that's very important to not only uh, the American, uh, American population for national security, but it's also important for economic security because we know the influx of illegal immigration has a disproportionate impact on uh, communities of color, Hispanic communities, and as well as the black community, especially in uh, places like Arizona. Democratic Representative Raul Grijalva continues to be critical of the president and the wall. Quote, Arizonans have the front row seat to the failures of the Trump administration, whether it's his inability to get us the resources we need to mitigate the spread of COVID-19 or the construction of his useless vanity wall along the border. President Trump says he plans to make even more progress on the wall by the end of the year. Over 212 miles and We'll be very close to 500 miles by the end of the year, and that's the area that we wanted. With the president at the border, Governor Doug Ducey, Senator Martha McSally, and Congresswoman Debbie Lesko. Madison Atkinson, Cronkite News. Former Vice President Joe Biden released a statement calling Trump's visit to Arizona a distraction. The Democratic rival said, quote, Yet once again, instead of doing the hard work needed to solve the public health and economic crisis facing America, Donald Trump remains focused on his expensive, ineffective, and wasteful wall on our southern border, unquote. Biden ended his statement with a plea, telling Arizonans they deserve a president who will rise to face the challenges of today. Meanwhile, Phoenix Mayor Kate Gallego announced the city's policy requiring face masks to be worn in public will not be enforced during tonight's Trump event at Dream City Church. Reporter Nicole Soto explains what precautions are being taken. The rally is hosted by Students for Trump, a national pro-Trump student group on high school and college campuses. The group expects close to 3,000 people in attendance, causing concern over health risks during the COVID-19 pandemic. Organizers say attendees are not required to wear a mask, but are encouraged to do what they feel comfortable with. Everybody, everybody signs a waiver um, when they're signing up for the event and um, everybody's um, welcome to wear a mask. A notice on the group's website includes a disclaimer that says, by attending this convention, you and any guests voluntarily assume all risks related to exposure to COVID-19 and agree not to hold turning point action, their affiliates, Dream City Church employees, agents, contractors, or volunteers liable for any illness or injury. But experts say this waiver might not hold up. The waiver um, for the convention coming up, it, 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 it's pretty, uh, to me, um, it, it doesn't have as much as I would expect to see in a waiver. Typically, a waiver is going to be more robust. It, it, so a waiver has to be clear. It has to be un unambiguous. And it also needs to be specific as to the claim you're, you're waiving or releasing. This waiver doesn't say that. 
According to the Arizona Department of Health Services, Arizona's COVID-19 cases surpassed 50,000 over the weekend, and 83% of intensive care beds are now occupied, a record high. But despite the rising cases, Students for Trump believes it is important for the event to happen. Um, obviously, one of the largest universities in the country is right down the road from the location, Arizona State and then Grand Canyon University. And what better way to reach some of these Americans at, at, uh, right down the road from two of those universities? Mayor Kay Gallego expressed her concerns about the event in a statement and encouraged the wearing of masks, including for President Trump. President Trump has not said whether or not he will be wearing a mask to the event. Nicole Soto, Cronkite News. The Democratic Party had a response to the president's visit. Congressman Ruben Gallego suggested there are some things Arizona needs from President Trump. So when he's coming to Arizona, uh, there's two things that he should bring, because uh, this is what we're missing. Number one, we're missing tests. Number two, we're missing leadership. We're not getting it from President Trump. We're not getting it from Martha McSally, and we're not getting it from Governor Ducey. Uh, we have a president who wants to distract instead of lead. Uh, he wants to let pass off the hard decisions to other leaders, such as our, our mayors, Mayor Gallego, Mayor Romero, uh, and Mayor uh, Evans. President Trump is planning to head to Wisconsin after his visit to Arizona. Arizona is continuing its COVID record-breaking streak for the seventh day in a row, with health officials reporting nearly 3,600 new coronavirus cases this morning. The state is also continuing to set records for the number of people hospitalized in intensive care and on ventilators. Right now, we have over 58,000 confirmed cases of the virus, and the death toll is over 1,300. Arizona has emerged as a COVID-19 hotspot since Republican Governor Doug Ducey lifted his stay-home orders in mid-May. As fear over the rise in cases mounts, many are questioning if and when a vaccine will become available. While there isn't a definite answer yet, many experts are assuring people that researchers are making excellent progress. During a hearing before lawmakers, the nation's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, revealed that one of many vaccines being developed is entering a key stage of testing starting in July. While noting the safety and effectiveness of the vaccine won't be known until it is tested in the field, he hopes to have a working vaccine available by early 2021. We feel cautiously optimistic based on the concerted effort and the fact that we are taking financial risks, not risks to safety, not risk to the integrity of the science, but financial risks to be able to be ahead of the game so that when, and I believe it will be when and not if, we get favorable candidates with good results, we will be able to make them available to the American public. Fauci also clarified that his task force does not plan on slowing down or stopping testing. This comes after the president stated at his Tulsa rally that he instructed the team to slow down testing efforts. The pandemic has affected many facets of life, including educating young children. Jake Holter spoke with the director of a local Valley preschool to see how they plan to move forward. Preschool is a kid's first taste of education outside of their home. It's a prime opportunity to socialize with other kids their age, but the COVID-19 pandemic has brought some changes. Lisa Tucker, director of Estrella Mountain Preschool, talks about how her school has adapted. Uh, COVID has affected us by um, reducing the amount of kids that we have in a classroom. Normally a classroom would have 14 kids and two teachers. So um, a total of you know 16 per classroom. Um, based upon the CDC guidelines that we received this year, uh, we have no more than nine, eight kids in a classroom with one teacher. So we're keeping it under 10. Tucker states because of the nature of a preschool, they already heavily disinfected tables, chairs, and toys, but have increased cleaning efforts since the pandemic. Now, every time a child uses something, it gets put into a bucket of soapy water to be washed. So we're constantly disinfecting, constantly trying to get everything as sanitized as possible. We're also uh, encouraging parents to temperature check every morning. Um, if a child comes in and doesn't feel well, um, we're going to scan them immediately, uh, remove them from the classroom, and they'll sit with me until parents can come and pick them up. Tucker emphasized that with the added safety measures in place, the preschool is still a place where children can develop their social skills. 
three to five year old, three to five year olds, three, four, five, really need to socialize. That's what they come to preschool for us to learn how to socialize, how to share, how to take turns. So we're not limiting them from doing that. We're just constantly on them about disinfecting after they've had interaction with toys and with each other. Um, we're doing playground a little differently this year in that we're only having one class at a time go out to the playground. Then when they're done, um, then the next class will come back. Tucker hopes that by incorporating these measures, they can help get case numbers under control and can once again make events such as Christmas programs and Easter egg hunts possible. Jay Coulter, Cronkite News. Estrella Mountain Preschool is set to resume class on August 19th and has their COVID safety guidelines posted on its website. Check out this powerful act of solidarity for NASCAR star Bubba Wallace. Fellow drivers, pit crew members, and other employees came together to escort his car to the front of the grid and stand around it for the national anthem. This after a noose was found hanging in his garage stall. Wallace is the only full-time black driver in NASCAR's top circuit. Overwhelmed by all the love coming his way, Wallace tweeted a selfie with the word together. And just a few hours ago, NASCAR released a statement saying, the FBI has completed its investigation at Talladega Super Speedway and determined that Bubba Wallace was not the target of a hate crime. The FBI report concludes and photographic evidence confirms that the garage door pull rope fashioned like a noose had been positioned there since as early as last fall. This was obviously well before the 43 team's arrival and garage assignment. We appreciate the FBI's quick and thorough investigation and are thankful to learn that this was not an intentional racist act against Bubba. We remain steadfast in our commitment to providing a welcoming and inclusive environment for all who love racing. This past Sunday was Father's Day. For Queen Creek High School linebacker Trey Reynolds, football comes easy thanks to his father Paul, who once played the same position. Cronkite News reporter Jose Solis Talk to both Trey and Paul on the former's future in college. Hard hitting and thriving on physical play, Queen Creek football's Trey Reynolds is the exact kind of defender coaches want. His father, Paul, a former player himself, has no doubt in his son's football IQ. Trey's always been a great athlete growing up. and He's just kind of molded into that uh, linebacker spot. and It's been fun talking to him and going over different schemes. And, and uh, he's a lot smarter than I was at that age, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Once a linebacker at ASU in the 90s, Paul Reynolds looks forward to watching his son play that same position at the University of Utah, Trey verbally committing to the Utes on May 22nd. I really uh, like their uh, hustle of the ball, and they're, they're really sideline to sideline players. That's what I've really seen. The coaching staff over there is phenomenal. They have a lot of great guys and with great knowledge of the, about football, and that's, that's who I want to be around. After leading Queen Creek last season with 159 total tackles, averaging nearly 12 a game, a defensive-minded team in Utah makes sense for Trey, who still continuously asks his father for advice on football. I'll come home for practice and just start asking him questions like, Hey, what if this situation happens, and what do I do here? And just, I'm just trying to learn little things that uh, that he learned. Just go 100% all the time, and if you just keep going hard and getting to the ball, if you make mistakes and ask questions later, you know, um, that's that's uh, that's the biggest piece of advice I can give him moving forward. What Paul wants from his son Trey is to be a better player than Paul was in college, with an inherited passion for the game. Trey looks to prove his father right with one of the most defensively strong teams in the Pac-12. Jose Solis, Cronkite News. Trey Reynolds is expected to graduate early according to Queen Creek coach Joe Germain. He's also the first 2021 high school defensive recruit that the Utah Utes signed. That's it for this edition of Cronkite News. For Arizona news updates throughout the day, follow us on Facebook and Twitter and find us online at cronkitenews.azpbs.org.